everybody, Pastor Gary here. I wanted to just take a little time to spend time with you about some things that I'm dealing with personally, and I think many of you are as well. I'm going to be sharing some things with you uh, in some couple different settings to be able to uh, just expound on how I'm using this time as we're dealing with some circumstances in our culture and our world, using this time to um, make sure that I'm in the right place uh, with my uh, studying of the Word of God, but also in my decision making. So today, what I want to do is begin a journey with you that I'll break into different pieces over the coming weeks where we spend time talking about how to make good decisions in life. I'm going to do another one as well on a different topic, but this one is about how to make good decisions in life. You know, I heard a uh, cashier say to me just a couple of weeks ago when all of this was going down, I was at the grocery store. I was not getting toilet paper, but anyways, I was there at the grocery store and she's like, man, you know, Pastor Gary, she knew who I was. She said, how are you making, you know, some of these difficult decisions like on what to do with the church and how to move forward, whether to have service, not all that stuff. I said, well, I thought it was a good question, but I said, man, it's easy for me. You know what? I, I seek God and I seek his truth on my decision making. And that's what I'm doing really right now is seeking God for truth because this thing is changing as the pastor of a church leading a lot of people. I have to be in tune with God. I have to get the right decisions out there. But my strategy hasn't changed. The things I'm doing are the things that I've always done when trying to make healthy decisions. Now, a lot of people have a lot of opinions and I've heard them over the last couple of weeks. Uh, there, uh, now more than ever, as people have even more time, sadly, to be on social media, it seems, we're getting more opinions out there. As I've made decisions, I've heard from all kinds of different opinions from people. But praise God, it's not opinions that guide me. It is ultimately God. So let me share with you some of the things I deal with in my decision making. These are important for you because as we go into some of these decisions and choices we're going to be making as a country, but in our homes as well over the next several months, you are going to be faced with decisions that may seem small in the moment, but could definitely change the trajectory of your life. So I want to make sure that you have this information because, hey, I may be leading a large church with a lot of people and staff and volunteers. You're leading people as well. Uh, maybe it's your spouse, uh, maybe it's your children, others around you in your work environment. You have important decisions to make. So I want to make sure you have this information. Some of you are going to be dealing with like, hey, I've lost a job. What do I do going forward? Do I go back to work? Uh, is it safe to go back to work? Is there um, too much chaos to exit out there right now? What will happen with health and how should I handle that? Uh, what about schooling? All these things little decisions that we're faced with. There's bigger decisions as well. I've had big decisions in my life. I'm facing some of them now. But these smaller, or maybe they seem like on the surface, smaller decisions, how do we handle them? Whether they're small decisions or big decisions, the formulas are the same. And again, getting these wrong has a huge impact on our future. I was thinking about some of the great failed decisions in history. And let me give you some of them. I wrote these down. Sam Phillips sold a small recording company to RCA in 1955 for $35,000. And that contract of that sale included the contract of a young man named Elvis Presley. Probably not a good idea to make that sale. History tells us not a good idea at all. Uh, Tom Selleck turned down the role of Indiana Jones. Maybe not a great decision. In 1936, Joe Schuster and Jerry Siegel sold the rights to Superman for $65 each. Not a great decision. A Boston man attempted to steal two live Maine lobsters and he decided to stick them down his pants as he exited the store. <laughs> not a good decision. We can look back on these and go, oh, wow, you know, what was this guy thinking? How about people many years ago who sold Walmart stock to buy Kmart stock? Not good decisions. We don't have to wait to the end of these decisions and go, 
that was bad. No, we can in the moment of decision making, make healthier decisions. And I wanna give you six of these over the next several recordings as we do these together to help you make better decisions. In Proverbs 2, in verse five and verse nine, one translation says this about those scriptures. If you want better insight and discernment, learn the importance for reverence for the Lord and trusting of Him. He shows us how to distinguish right from wrong and how to find right decision every time. It is God who gives us the pathway time and time again for healthy decisions. Here's the first principle I'm embracing right now in my life. I hope you will as well, and that is this what I would call the ideal test. And the ideal test is this. Is this decision in harmony with God's word? Is it in harmony with God's word? So it is the decision I'm making in line with what God's word would tell me to do. This is always the very best in first test because God has given us a blueprint for healthy decision making. This boils down to deciding, you know, what is the healthiest choice to follow God's word, God's everlasting promises that you can trust that have always been true, or trust what the world says. So God's word versus what the world, because anything outside of God's word is influenced by the world. What is the best decision I can make? It's going to be following God's word. So many people right now and in the coming weeks are going to make decisions based on popular culture. They're going to make, uh, you know, popular opinion, political correctness, opinion polls. What do the polls say? All of those things, pointless because God says, you don't have to listen to any of those things. I've given you my word that you can trust in your decision making. I kind of feel like If something was good 10,000 years ago, and it's still true today, 5,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 500 days ago, it's still true today. And that is the truth about God's word. It has always been true. It has always been right. It has always been pure. And if it has been before, it still is today. So why not go to the one thing that is everlasting? On the other hand, if you follow the media, if you go for polling data, if you go after popular opinion, here's the problem. It changes all the time. And right about the time you think you're making a decision that is popular with people, then people's opinions change. And you're left with, you know, just like shifting again. With God's word, you don't have to shift. You can stay focused. God's laws have always been true. God's laws really come to us in three ways. Physical law, moral law, and spiritual law. You can test them over and over again and see that God is true time and time again. The laws of gravity, God's laws of physics. What goes up must come down. That's never changed. Moral laws, we understand them. They've never changed. They've stayed the same over history. And guess what? Spiritual laws are still true as well. You can test them all you want, and people do. You can try them all you want, and people do. But in the end, God's word and God's laws always stay true. You can't thumb your nose at something that has always been true. I I mean, you can if you want. And again, you, you can do that. But why not say, rather than thumb my nose at something that has always been true, why not embrace something that has always been true? been true. Is this a decision that I am making that lines up with the Word of God? The other day I was putting my Christmas stuff away, well several weeks ago now, and I went up into our attic where I put some of that away. We have a light in my attic. I didn't turn it on. I thought it would be a good idea to just roam around around the attic without the light on. Whacked my head on the short beams there in the attic. If I turned the light on I would have seen a lot differently. God's word is like that. It keeps us from bumping our head, finding the brokenness that comes with testing God's laws. It allows us to encounter God in a healthy way in our life and make good decisions. The Bible says God's word is like a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
flip the switch on right now in these coming days and weeks in your life. Say, God, I want to know if I'm making a right decision. I'm going to open your word and figure that out. I'm going to do a whole separate recording on what it means to open God's word and study his word along the way to make sure you're getting healthy Bible interpretation. If you want to know the principles behind healthy decision making, study what God's truth has always been saying. Now, the greatest temptation in all of humanity is to ignore what God says or to say, is what God says really true? That's the oldest temptation. In other words, in the Garden of Eden, uh, Adam and Eve were tempted to say, is what God's promises are, have, that have been put out there to us, are they really true? Adam and Eve chose poorly. And today, people are still, still choosing poorly. We're seeing it time and time again. So it's a great temptation. You're going to be tempted in the coming days and weeks and months to make unhealthy choices uh, that humanity has been doing for a long time, or you can follow God. Look. I don't always understand, you know, God's principles. Like, I, I, I can test them if I want and, and understand them better. Like, I don't always understand it. Somebody said to me the other day, you know, why is it that God's word tells us that sex outside of marriage is not healthy? Why, why is that? Well, I can give you nine or ten reasons why that's unhealthy. I can. Sometimes, though, there are things I don't understand. God just says, this is what you do. Trust me, at least in the moment, I don't know, always understand it. Like, I don't always understand giving a tithe. You know, I don't always understand that. I think I can come up with some of the principles why that's important. Sometimes in the moment, I can say, God, I don't understand this. But he shows me over time, over time, why this is healthy for me. In other words, sometimes in a moment, you're reading God's word and his promises, and you don't fully understand them but you do it and you trust him with the results. Other times, you know why God's word says a certain thing and you do it and you trust it as well. So that's the first test I wanna share with you. I'll share some more in the coming episodes. The first test though, the ideal test, what does God's word say? I wanna pray for you. Father, as people are making decisions in the coming days and weeks, the smallest decision can put us on the wrong trajectory or the right trajectory. God, we've got time. We can't say we don't have time. We have time to open your word. And I'm praying that people will do that and seek your truth. In Jesus' name, amen.